Welcome. Listen to this next Agile Vocalist blogcast. Mary Ford has been a vocal performer for 45 years. Her work has been a cappella as an accompanied soloist and most recently as a member of the Left Coast Sextet, an all-women's jazz ensemble. She sung for 34 years with Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir. Mary is a mother, spouse, retired psychologist, and body worker, as well as an active artist, writer, and adventurer. She works with several local nonprofits as an advisor, teacher, and donor activist, and she's dead serious about economic and racial justice. Mary is a boogie boarder and rabidly competitive about pickleball. So I'd love for the folks listening and watching, um, tell us about your, how you got your roots in singing, um, how you found out you loved it, and um, your love of sound and performance. Okay. It's funny, I, I hadn't thought of it until you said that, but I, I, I've been singing my whole life. I've been singing, I sang, songs in camp and then I would go home and I would sing and I would sing in the car. I drove my family insane because I sang all the time. I, they couldn't stop me. We'd go on trips. I'd be singing, singing, singing. Um, and then I actually just realized that I, I went to Catholic school. Mary Catherine Ford is my name and um, got Catholic. Um, I heard up with people and I I had, I was utterly thrilled. And I was so thrilled to see all these people up there being so happy and friendly. And oh, I still know those songs. Uh, just from that one show they did in the high school auditorium when I was in elementary school. So anyway, so Fun. that's how it started. And then in second grade, Sister Pius, realized that I could sing and she had me sing the Bulula Lao at the um, Christmas concert and I was terrified and warbled through it and then the rest is history. No, um, I great. sang, you know, I sang in Glee Club and I went to National Cathedral School and I sang in the Madrigals there and I went to college and I sang in cafes and I found out about Joni Mitchell and I learned dulcimer and I sang songs and I performed. I performed then. I, I moved to California when I was 19. Okay. And, uh, I sang in uh, at coffee houses. I sang on the street. I sang anywhere I could sing. And, and somebody noticed me at that and put me into a band and taught me how to sing jazz. And I did that. And then I was in a bluegrass band. So I want to preface the, the choir stuff a little bit with yeah. um, what a lot of people may not know is that there's been extensive research done that singing makes you happier. It helps stabilize mental health. It helps you maintain a level of balance and or improve. Um, there's even been some research that I'll link to in the liner notes that shows that music uh, evolved in service to group living and that it's innately connected to basic human social drives. Um, and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about with your background as a psychologist in how you've seen that come to fruition um, with people you've worked with over the years and um, both for yourself, but anyone you worked with, how, how did music affect them or what, what, it, what did you observe um, in terms of the human, the human animal, the human cycle? psychological animal yeah well you know I, I one of the things i love about the you know it's uh, it's like everyone knows music is singing is wonderful for you but now we have proof so yay yay um, there's literally it acts as a bellows on your ribs in a way where you are pumping your lymphatic system so you you're increasing your lymph lymphatic flow as well as airflow you know, you're moving your body in a way that you you can't fully control, which seems to be the goal of most things these days. And <laughs> this, this ends up being the, the antidote to a lot of that. 
um, right. it is, you know, you, you can learn about music, you can learn music, you can learn music theory, you can learn songs, et cetera. But, you know, the bottom line is, is that you learn all this stuff. And then when you're really singing, you're letting go. Because if you are really singing hard, um, you are trying to control your throat and your jaw and so forth, and you are not going to get your spirit out in it in the same way if you're trying to control it that much. So you, it's getting all prepared, and then it's actually having to let go, like so many other things in life. So yes. let's lead with that into um, Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir, which for short acronym purposes is OIGC. Yeah. Um, in case I say that, <laughs> um, your journey started over 30 years ago. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll make a long story short and say I, I got married in 1988 and I was in a shipwreck on my honeymoon. And uh, a lot of things changed after that because we almost died. Seriously. And wow. uh uh, I was kind of wandering around in a daze and I had a year and a half of surgeries and oh, all kinds of things that happened to me. And one of the things that happened is um, uh, it was uh, Jesse Jackson was running for president and I went to a, a fundraiser and I heard the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir Ensemble. Nice. And I went, that is what I want to do. five years to try out for, as a soloist and then I, I became a soloist after that and then about eight years in I became I started being into leadership and on the board and um, we travel we travel to um, Israel and um, Australia well, we've gone a lot of places in the country you know and we get to sing together and I'm with people who are I might not know in other ways. You know, there's every faith, every color, every sexual orientation, every uh, economic background or status, uh, and lots of other things that I know and don't know about people. And we all sing, and that's the main thing we do together. And we we embody that when we sing. I mean, we sing really well i said humbly um but we we manifest on stage as with what we're doing with the love that we feel and the the joy that we feel in when we're honoring black baptist gospel music which is what we're doing not only black baptist but black gospel music and spirituals nice it sounds like, you know, being with people is really these people in particular that you've rehearsed with and you're ultimately performing with gets you really excited. Um, is music a sensual experience for you? And what do you do to get pumped up before a concert besides show up? Mm. <laughs> is it a, it's a spiritual thing for sure. And certainly the choir reinforces that big time. But, you know, I sing, I've, I've sung for years. I sing a cappella. I love singing a cappella as well. And I, I sing it, I sang it a lot of women's conferences over the years. And um, uh, it's very meaningful to me to be doing that. Um, and it releases me. And it, when I'm at my best with it, I and that's how I actually try and prepare myself. And I, I had one teacher, Molly Holmes, you guys a lot of, would know her. Um, 
she helped me a lot with uh, when I am preparing. I actually don't need any help pumping up. I need help <laughs> unpumping up. Um, you know, like calming down and not getting into that place about it. And uh, she was very good about helping, reminding me. And, and we do it in the choir. We always do a circle before we sing. Yeah. And we, we, we have sort of a chant almost we do together about bringing love. Um, yeah. And what Molly always was talking about is big, long breaths in, big breaths out, long ones. Keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Don't be coughing. You know, if you have, you swallow if you need to, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And the other part is to remember it's not about you. That oh, I, for me. more about that, yeah. yeah. For me, it's, I am a vessel at some point. I'm a messenger. Okay. And that, you know, uh, I feel that way. It, it, uh, you know, it, I don't want it to seem like it's just a trick, but really when I'm doing it, I do feel like a servant uh, in a cool way um, that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something into the world. You know, uh -huh. I'm a midwife or something like that. That I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something, and and in the process of it, I'm transforming myself. I mean, I've sung for thousands of people um, at a time, and that is just, you know, right, a, a huge thing. And it's not just like, wow, yeah, now they know how good I am. It's, oh my goodness, we have just gone into this place together. And I feel it. And then I, and I, when that happens, I am incredibly vulnerable and I'm bringing it and, and, and I'm very prepared too. Yeah. <laughs> so that when I'm, when I'm taken over by that, my body knows how to go ahead and sing and, and produce, you know, so that I can let spirit take me. Mary and I met through an organization called Casadero Performing Arts Family Camp. In this segment, we talk about sounds at camp, or lack thereof. How does CAS and getting away for a week to CAS and, you know, not having Wi-Fi and not being able to be electronically connected? Um, and having a nap tier period where no one in the camp is allowed to talk. Out oh, loud. yes. The quiet yeah. period. Yes. That is a big deal. I mean, none of us like to do it, but boy, you better do it because you are going to get talked to if you don't. And <laughs> that is magic. And not just for those kids. Believe me, I've ta I started taking naps when I'd never had naps before. Uh, you know, it was, it was yeah. quiet and I wasn't allowed to blah, blah. You know, yeah. Blah, blahing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's an amazing people, community of people. Um, yeah, so for um, people who don't know, there's there's two classes in the morning. There's lunch where you get breakfast. You can get a breakfast at any time, two classes in the morning. You have lunch, then you have quiet time, which is what you're talking about. And then that's followed by free time. And then you finish the day with two more classes. And then at night, there's a variety of activities and dances and performances and shows that culminate. Go ahead. And yeah. during free time, there's actually an open mic thing That's right. that you can go to. And if you're just working on something, you can go up and play a piece of it or, right. or, That's or right. not. Or you and somebody else say, oh, let's do that song. And you go and do that. And uh, uh, it's a beautifully uh, supportive uh, situation where people yeah. know each other. And I mean, I, I joke about it, but, you know, it's like dare to suck is one of the mottos we have. It's like, go ahead, just yeah. do it. Everybody's going to love you. Yeah. It's fine to be doing that. And so you, you get over some of that, the um, performance business. What is, what are the arts? What is CAS? What is singing? What does sound do for adults? Right. Well, you know, as you know, I mean, it can feel very intimidating to start up if you haven't done it before. Um, you know, uh, but it, 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 it gives you back your childhood. <laughs> it gives you back childhood in the present, right? It, it's, it means uh, if you can get over that hump of, oh my goodness, I'm at the bottom of the ladder again, which it is, it's hard to do. It's hard to get, have a new job that way too, or a new profession or 
and so forth. And it's the same with music because music, oh boy, it can be really humbling. I mean, you can sing and sing any old time, but if you're do, doing music, you know, it's, it, can, it can feel intimidating. And my gosh, I mean, singing, you know, uh, thank God there's a lot of supportive um, sort of uh, singing shows now where people are nice, but you know, <laughs> the amount of humiliation so many people feel about, about singing, <sighs> it's just such a sin that that happened. Yeah. Um, because yeah. singing can be, uh, I'm now I'm going off topic a little there, but no, it's I, good. I, I, it's I got a little soapbox there for a minute. Um, for for adults, it means you can you can go back and be let go, it, you know, lose that identity, lose the thing that you've got to do in the next hour, lose lose thinking you know what needs to happen. One of the things that happened um, at Casadero after I was there a few years and became more and more comfortable and felt safer and safer, um, I, I ended up doing this 15 second skit one time with this person. This is me dressed as opera lady. And uh, she's holding up her uh, brassiere right there, the pointy brassiere thing. And she has a, uh, had a swan with her most of the time as well. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. And uh, a plastic swan, of course. And uh, she, she was iconic and she was very meaningful because she, she, there was a huge buildup for her to come on stage and sing. And then she never actually ever sang. And she was, she was on stage eight years in a row and something would happen. And so, and it was really, it had to do with me sort of, it was unconscious at first, but basically my own anxieties about, about performing. Right, so all this would happen, then all of a sudden I'd run, I'd kind of run off stage, and she, she had, to, she was in prison for a while, and she was in <laughs> rehab, and you know she tried to adopt some kids, you know, the, you know, a la some people we know, um, and you know the kid I had, I trained one of the kids at CAS to, you know, I, I, she came up to be adopted, and she came up to me and kicked me in the shin and said, no way, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, just crazy fun stuff. So anyway, uh, that, that was one of the, that was beyond, I was terrified every year that I had to do this. And then I would write for four hours sometime during CAS. And then, then I would do this skit on, on the evening that's called, um, talent, what is it? Untalent show. Untalent show, Untalent right? Show. You're supposed to do something that you're not good at. Right. But it has to be, um, unusual, unprecedented, but never unrehearsed. I think I will sing something that is often attributed uh, as a Cherokee saying. Um, and sometimes I see Indian proverb or, you know, uh, Native American. Um, and it's something I've sung on and off since I was in my 20s. And okay. it, it means something to me. Awesome. Yeah. There's the breath. When you were born, you cried, and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. When you were born, you cried. And the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. Yay! This is how I do applause in the Zoom era. Yay! I love the Zoom era. The, your applause is in the email. <laughs> Thank you. Yay! That was inspiring. Be sure to listen again soon.